Hey there, everybody. Megan Jansen here, Employee Wellness Solutions Network. I'm excited to jump into a bit of a topic this month all about wellness culture. And I want to refer to an interesting um, Benefits Canada Healthcare Survey, uh, the 2023, that came out um, and highlights some really valuable insights into the importance of employers considering, um, you know, the evolution of a wellness of a wellness program, including various uh, measures pertaining to mental health. And so I wanted to uh, uh, just share a bit of a response piece to, to some of the content that uh, was shared in that particular uh, survey report. Uh, first of all, 79% of employers are offering um, at least one wellness initiative. And um, that is very really much ranging from mental health initiatives, fitness challenges, immunization clinics, um, smoking cessation programs, et cetera. So there's various uh, uh, wellness initiatives that can be, really make up a, uh, a successful wellness, uh, wellness program. Now, when it comes down to what employers are, are offering, um, it, the survey talks about half of those uh, plan sponsors or employers are offering uh, mental health and mental wellness initiatives. This is definitely across the board what we're seeing, um, the importance for employers to consider ensuring that mental wellness, emotional self-care, mental health initiatives are part of the overall strategy. Now, interestingly, um, what was also shared is the importance also of um, the, the need for wellness and health promotion and employee well-being it needs to be in the walls of the organization. You know, long time, long, long go, uh, you know, running initiatives, and challenges and exercise classes and different things were, were the, you know, what people wanted and what people thought were um, important, which they are. But part of an overall strategy is definitely the key. So building a wellness culture is, is critical to the success of anything um, employers and wellness teams and wellness ambassador networks choose to run. Um, just a couple of things that I wanted to share with that in terms of um, thinking about wellness and healthy workplace, healthy culture, and building a culture of health um, is such an important piece of this. So a few things to think about, and I, I, I sort of think of these as, as takeaways. Number one is the, the critical element of building any wellness strategy into the organizational plan. So what are, what's important to employers? What's important to leaders? Are there main cost drivers associated um, with the organization that might want to be addressed? What are some of those metrics that are trackable around maybe usage, claims, premiums, even drug classification data? How can you make your wellness messaging, your wellness program um, make sense as an organization? And this is definitely one of those ways it takes that strategic approach to be successful. Um, whether we're running, you know, an event or, you know, a challenge or bringing in a speaker, there needs to be a, a connection. Um, and that's definitely one of those ways to start building that culture. Wellness initiatives, wellness programs work the best with that. So support from all around is definitely a critical piece from the organizational perspective. Now, getting down to the leader's perspective, this is where we do find also best practice um, to support a wellness culture because that's what's going to make the most sense for organizations in successful wellness strategies is the in importance for the commitment, the connection, and the support of leaders. And granted, I've talked about this several times before. It's probably the most important of all is to ensure we have um, that support from the C-suite executives, the middle managers, the supervisors, and a wellness team. So tying in some of those strategies, um, some of those needs to ensure we tie to the strategic approach uh, to the organization does definitely goes a long way. And having every layer of leader understand that they're an important spoke on that wheel. Um, so that's another element of kind of building it into the walls of the organization. Now, lastly, I wanted to just uh, spend a couple of minutes talking about um, the uh, you know main areas of uh, best practices in addition to strategic approach and leadership support. It's also the importance of it being very visible and accessible. 
and communicated properly. So these are, again, some of those best practices when it comes to uh, the execution of a wellness strategy. It definitely needs to be visible. If it's hidden on an intranet seven pages deep, it's not visible enough. So there needs to be more, I think, an emphasis on dissection of what the overall goals of an organization and or organizational wellness program is. Is it to just check the box to say we're doing something? Is it to make some changes in an, in an organization? Is it to shift a culture? Is it to um, lower possibly some of these high cost drivers associated with employee health? What is it? What are those objectives? And ensuring that we're really clear about that can definitely go a long way. Keeping it visible, keeping it accessible, communicating it properly are all, again, the implementation best practices when it comes to a program. Consistent evaluation, consistent metrics analysis definitely is, is in those kind of best practices. But if you really want to look at wellness, mental wellness, emotional self-care, you know, what employers are, are wanting for their employees to be done properly, we have to think of it as that. Building a wellness culture and creating a semblance of um, a health and wellness uh, organizational game plan that makes the most sense for the employees. 